Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course that's still working on its meta achievements. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to learn all about firewalls. This comes from our Network Plus requirements in our N10-004 exam, section 6.2 where we need to look at how firewalls work. And we need to understand application layer versus network layer. We need to understand stateful versus stateless. Let's go through scanning services, content filtering, signature identification, and zones. That's a lot that's going in, these modern firewalls and what they're doing. Let's start with this concept of stateful and stateless. It's, a, it's something that comes up very often when you hear firewalls described. What does that mean? Well, let's start talking about a stateless firewall. What a stateless firewall will do is that it allows traffic coming in one direction and traffic going in another direction, but it doesn't keep track of the state of these flows. What we're doing is setting up policies for incoming traffic and setting up policies for outgoing traffic, regardless of whether that traffic is involved in a conversation. So I've got a network here with a client, and there's my firewall. This is a stateless firewall connected to the internet. There's a web server out here, and there's also some bad guy out here, some ne'er-do-well who's looking to get into my network. What this firewall will do is my client will just talk to my web server and the web server will talk to my client. That's our normal conversation. But because this is a stateless firewall, I've told this firewall, if you ever see anything coming in to my network that happens to have a destination TCP address of 80, allow it in. Even though the normal conversations to my web server, because this is a stateless firewall and I've created such a bad policy, if somebody was out there communicating, they could go right into my system over that port 80. And that's because this machine doesn't have any state. This firewall has no idea if that's legitimate traffic or not. It doesn't keep up with that type of thing because it is stateless. Stateful firewalls have been around now for quite some time and they're almost the standard in the networking environments we have today. It's kind of hard to find a stateless firewall. Almost everybody is running with a stateful firewall these days. And what this is, exactly the same situation. But my policy that I've set up in this firewall is that clients here can surf the web. They can go out and talk to web servers. It's a very simple policy, but what it does is still allow my client to talk to the web server. And because the firewall know that my client started this conversation with the web server, it lets the reply come back in. If I don't have a previous conversation set up to the ne'er-do-well, he can send all the frames he wants to. But because there is not a current state for that conversation going in, and it doesn't apply to any of the rules that I've set, we're going to block that information at the firewall, and it will never get to that client. Some of these newer firewalls work on something called zones. A zone is just a logical grouping of parts of my network. Generally, these newer firewalls work with zones as a basic form of security. If traffic is coming from the internal network to the external network, give me a policy. If they're going from a DMZ zone to an internal zone, here's a separate policy. If I'm on a wireless zone and I need to communicate to the external zone, here's a policy. So you might have multiple ports on a device and you can see all the green ports might be members of one zone, the, uh, uh, the brown type connections are another zone. There's some purple connections for a third zone. And there might be an internal link, an external link, some wireless access points. It's just a fundamental way to set up policies. And even though I have all these multiple ports on my firewall and they're all in different zones, I need some very simple policies now that just describe how I want traffic to flow from the internal to the external, from the wireless to the DMZ. And that single zone configuration takes into account that there are multiple interfaces on the firewall that are going to take advantage of those policies. Very clean way to set up policies it makes the administration of these modern firewalls a lot easier. The firewalls and the way they work are really changing around us these days. There are network layer firewalls that we traditionally think of as what a firewall does. But there are also these newer firewalls that are application firewalls. And instead of really getting into the details of the differences, I thought I would show you the rules that would be in a network-based firewall versus an application-based firewall. So here in a network-based firewall, I'm setting up policies based on port numbers, TCP port numbers and UDP port numbers. So here's a rule that says my FTP client can FTP data. And the FTP 
application uses multiple port numbers to communicate. So I've got to have multiple rules for that. This first rule says that it's going to use TCP and it's going to have a range between 1024 and 5000 using port 20 as its remote service that's out there. So I can go out to an FTP server over port 21. That makes it very simple. But uh, FTP also uses port 20 and 21. So I need a separate rule that essentially does the same thing, TCP, but it's using port 20. And it, depending on the other type of FTP I might be using, I might need a third rule that even opens up more ports to allow that through. Now, an interesting part about this is this was designed to allow FTP, but since I've opened up port 21 and port 20, any application can flow across my network using these ports 21 and 20 to go outside. So I, I've designed this for FTP, but all my firewall knows is that it's TCP port 21, TCP port 20. It has no idea what goes on beyond that. There could be anything inside of those packets. The firewall is not designed to know what that is because it is a network layer firewall. Now, if we wanted to create an application layer firewall rule, it would look like this. This is very different. An application layer firewall looks into the packets themselves to determine what's the application going across. And this rule says if I'm inside my network, allow FTP to go out. It doesn't care what port number FTP uses. It doesn't care how many port numbers FTP uses. Our application layer firewalls are designed to understand inherently how FTP works, and it figures out all the details from there. A much simpler way to set up roles, a much easier way to set up roles. And boy, we're glad that we have firewalls now that are able to do that kind of thing so we can watch for what's going on and just allow FTP and not have to worry so much about what's running inside of our port numbers. Most of our modern firewalls use signatures to be able to identify the traffic going through the network. And as the data is flowing through, they're just looking through what's inside of these packets, and they want to capture some of that bad information that's going back and forth. And so this signature identification is what allows us to do that. This is very common. You have signatures in your antivirus hosts that are configured on your machine. They're looking for viruses coming through. Works the same way on a firewall. They will look for viruses, for spyware, for vulnerabilities. They, they'll run IPS signatures inside of them. It's almost identical to that process that takes place on your computer. Those signatures are really, really important. The firewall is only going to be able to allow or stop traffic based on those pattern matches. So you have to make sure that if you're running a firewall that uses those signatures, make sure that the signatures are always updated. You have the latest edition of those so that your firewall knows what the latest types of viruses are and the latest types of spyware. If you start running behind with those signatures, all of the new viruses that come out, all of the new vulnerabilities that come out are going to get right through your firewall. Content filtering is another way that we can allow or block traffic going into and out of our network. And today it's done very often on the firewall. Traditionally, we've referred to this as something called URL filtering, is to allow or disallow people going to certain websites. So if you're going to www a really bad website you shouldn't visit.com that has some things on there you probably shouldn't be seeing when you're at work. This URL filtering capability, this content filtering capability on your firewall can block those things. And usually an organization is going to create a policy that says during the work day, you cannot visit a website that has anything to do with sports. You cannot visit a website that has anything to do with gaming. You should probably be working. So that's why they, this content filtering has become very popular. The idea is that you would have millions of URLs already categorized on a firewall, so it knows if you go to a website what it should be categorized as. A URL filters are one step in the way of protecting our networks. They really are more for allowing or disallowing certain types of content rather than being a security tool. But in many environments, you need that level of filtering to only allow people to visit the things they probably should only be visiting during work time hours. These days, our firewalls go well beyond URL filtering. These days, our firewalls can block Skype. They can look for BitTorrent traffic. They can restrict or allow you going to Yahoo Mail or restrict or allow what application uploads or downloads you do to any of those sites. So very detailed content filtering these days that goes beyond URLs and really starts looking into the content of every application you're using and making sure that your network remains safe by allowing or disallowing some of these applications to run. 
since we're looking at traffic, there's many things we can look at inside the traffic. And the signatures and the scanning that we can do in firewalls becomes really useful. These firewalls can look for viruses. They can look for spyware. They can identify vulnerabilities. They can look for every mail that comes through and identify if there's spam inside of that mail. They can see if there's viruses inside of that mail. And then if they're blocking it, they find a virus, they can block it and send you a message saying, Bob sent you an email, but it had a virus inside of it. So I took the virus out, and here's what's left. Very nice message that tells you you didn't get what you were expecting, but in the end, you were protected because you did not get that virus sent to you via email. And obviously, that's a very important thing to keep filtering these days, especially in very, very large environments. Let's review some of the things that we've learned about firewalls. Our first question is, what firewall traffic management mechanism restricts traffic based on the flow of a conversation. And if you recall, we had two different kinds of firewalls, and this is a stateful firewall. It remembers the state of those flows and allows or disallows traffic based on that. Our next question, what kind of firewall rule relies on TCP or UDP port ranges to restrict traffic? And that's our old school kind of firewall that is a network layer firewall rule. And the last question, how does the firewall identify applications? viruses, spyware, or vulnerabilities. Well, we can identify that based on signatures that we happen to have inside of the firewall. Well, that covers what we need to know about firewalls for our Network Plus exam. All of those different application versus network, the scanning capabilities, and all of the other pieces dealing with signature identifications and zones. If you'd like to look through any of our other Network Plus videos, you'd like to leave some messages for other people that are watching these videos, or send me a message, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.